All right, welcome back to the channel. So Ryan Garcia has been ordered by both the WBC and the WBO to have a mandatory fights, which would line him up to get shots at their titles. Um, not a big surprise there, but I want to talk about exactly why I believe that that is happening at this point. Let's do that in this video. All right, welcome back to the channel. Um, and thank you to everybody, for the subscribers, for continuing to support the channel. If you're not subscribed, please accept my invitation. Hit the subscribe button, hit the bell icon. Thank you to everybody that has joined as a member. If you're not joined as a member, you can hit the join button below. And thank you to everybody that supports on the Patreon and everybody that supports on the live streams Monday through Friday. So um, Ryan Garcia is somebody that is um, being recruited very heavily to fight for a WBC and a WBO uh, championship. Now, Ryan Garcia is an excellent fighter and he began and he belongs to a class of fighters, lightweight, young lightweights, I guess, yeah, I guess I would call them all lightweights, but pretty much from 130 to guys that are going to wind up at around 140. Some of them might be at 147 pounds. Um, but Ryan Garcia is one of that group. The of the you know Shakur Stevenson. Um, I haven't heard as many people talk about um uh little B Hop guy. What is it? Chris Colbert? I'll stop calling him little little B Hop, but Chris Colbert, Javante Tank Davis is a little bit older, but is still kind of in that class. Then obviously there's Shakur Stevenson, Devin Haney, um, and Tiafimo Lopez. But a bunch of very, very good fighters. Several of them have already gotten shots at tit title shots, specifically. Shakur Stevenson for the WBO and um, Devin Haney for the WBC. Tiafimo Lopez for, uh, won the IBF. So Devin, uh, excuse me, um, Ryan Garcia is not quite up there with those guys yet, but he's heading that way and he's trying to push in order to get, he's trying to push to get to a championship or a title fight. Now, the one that he's asking for, obviously, is for the Javante Tank Davis fight. But the WBC has something else in mind, and they order the Luke. They order the Luke Campbell fight. The WBO ordered a fight with somebody else. Now, why were they doing this for for uh, Ryan Garcia? Right. If you look at the other fight, first of all, there's plenty of other fighters that deserve opportunities to fight uh, for for titles at lightweight, and. I would say some of them and many of them just as much as Ryan Garcia, because Ryan Garcia has not really beaten anybody yet. He beat Jason Duno with the one punch knockout. He beat uh, Fran uh, Francesco Fran uh, Fonseca, but uh, with the one shot knockout. But other than that, dude, he really hasn't he hasn't done much. He hasn't done any more than Chris Colbert has. And I'm not sure that I've heard Chris Colbert be ordered to fight, you know, for, you know, to get put in this running of this or this tournament that people are talking about that's happening at, at, um, at 135 pounds, which by the way, uh, let me just put a pin in that and say, look, man, this ain't, a, this is not some, this is not some tournament, uh, because a tournament would mean that if you win, you move on, right? If you move, if you win, you move on. There are brackets to a tournament. This is not a tournament. Now I hear that the several other media people referring to it as a tournament, this is not a tournament. This is not going to be a situation where the best man, where the best man wins, right? Well, the best man way, may win, but it's not being set up in a matter that the best man is going to be determined based on the matches, the matchups that you make. Because if that was the case, facility, we wouldn't even be talking about a fight with Ryan Garcia and Luke Campbell. We would be talking about the fight that would be taking place between Vasily Lomachenko and Devin Haney. Because that's his man, Lomachenko, Devin Haney is his mandatory. But you're going to now have the WBC bring into, the, into this very confused equation already, bring in Ryan Garcia. Now, when I say this is a confused scenario, you have Vasily Lomachenko, who's the WBC franchise champion. You have, you have um, Devin Haney, who's the regular champion. Then you have... Javier Fortuna versus who's been ordered to fight somebody 
in order for something that's called an that may be an interim title. And then you have another fight being ordered between Ryan Garcia and and Luke Campbell. A uh, Luke Campbell, by the way, who has already had two shots at a championship. So number one, why is Ryan Garcia in in the mix for this for this lightweight title, which shouldn't even which which should be between Vasily Lomachenko and Devin Haney, period. Shouldn't include Javier Fortuna. Shouldn't include uh, Devin Haney. Shouldn't include um, Luke Campbell. Shouldn't include Ryan Garcia. It's just a straight up and down thing. Devin Haney did what he needed to do in order to become the mandatory for Vasily Lomachenko. And the WBC took the first opportunity they could to protect Vasily Lomachenko get him away from Devin Haney, but at the same time, keep Vasily Lomachenko as their champion. So much so that they are claiming that the fight between Teofimo Lopez and Vasily Lomachenko is for an undisputed title, even though, even though if Teofimo Lopez wins, it won't be unified because Devin Haney, because, excuse me, because Teofimo Lopez cannot win the title, can't win the title that Vasily Lomachenko holds. <laughs> you can't make this stuff up. This is so ass, this is so ass backwards and ridiculous. And, and I will get to the obvious reason why this is. Like, in my opinion, I'll, I'll put it that way. I won't say it's obvious, but it's apparent to me that the reason by this is that they want certain types of champions. That's the only thing that I can figure. Why, why Luke Campbell? What does Luke Luke Campbell lost every damn round to Vasily Lomachenko for a WBC title shot? Why is he back in the running? He lost every round to Vasily Lomachenko. You know he can't beat Vasily Lomachenko. Why is he even in it? You know what I'm saying? Ryan Garcia. Ryan Garcia has not beaten anything, anybody, nor done anything to put him in a position where he should be fighting for a lightweight championship. He's not done anything. He did not earn his way into a mandatory position. You're ordering a fight and just pulling him in and trying to make sure he gets into that position. Or Luke Campbell. Because honestly, Luke Campbell's a tough fight. But from what I can see, you get the same, you can get the same benefit if Ryan Garcia wins or Luke Campbell wins. Because you don't have that much color. I'm t I, I, it's the only reason I, I've stayed away from this so long with the WBC that at, at this point in time, I just, there's no, other re there's no other reason that I can see for the way that these guys belong. Between France, France, uh, DeJorn Cruz, the treatment of Cruz versus the treatment of um, Alejandro Jimenez, the treatment of Tyson Fury versus the treatment of Deontay Wilder, the treatment of, the treatment of, of Luke Campbell and Vasily Lomachenko versus the treatment of um, uh, Devin Haney, the treatment of Canelo Alvarez versus the treatment of Jamal of Jamal Charlo. It just it just seems it's just really interesting that the golden boy type, the golden boy type fighter, right, <laughs> is the one is the one that they're pulling for. It's it's like it's almost as if. The WBC believes what, what Abel Sanchez believes, that black fighters can't sell. And maybe that's it. Maybe it's just that maybe Abel Sanchez really is a major operator within the WBC and, Abel Sa and the WBC thereby, you know, therefore is taking on the beliefs, the belief system of Abel Sanchez. You remember the Abel Sanchez who was promoting, who was um, not just, he was the mouthpiece for and the trainer for Gennady Golovkin, and where people would ask him about why he's not fighting Jamal Charlo, why he won't fight black fighters. And they said, well, black fighters don't sell. People aren't interested in that. People want Mexican style. They want Mexican style. It seems as if, it seems to me, as if Abel Sanchez is running the WBC. Because I can't understand why, otherwise, why are you doing all of these backflips for people that don't deserve the backflips? I mean, you see, he they see Tyson Fury, they see that glove with nobody's hand with 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 nothing but hand showing and no padding, right? 
don't they immediately without any investigation no tyson fury we believe in tyson fury this is a shame and sad what you're doing to tyson fury by pointing out the fact that you see fists coming through this guy's glove but while we're at while we're in the middle of talking about it let's suspend jarell big baby miller for three years for doing the same thing tyson fury's done <laughs> for doing the same thing tyson fury did but suspend him even though he's not even fighting for our sanctioning body to begin with it's just a but dude these guys just, it's just horse shit it's just horse it's, it's all it is they clearly have an idea of the champion that they want which is why they have a franchise champion because there are certain fighters that are so special to the world of boxing and mean so much in their ability to fight between multiple weight classes that they must be our champion in this weight class, and we will not ask them to defend their belt against these lowly other ca lowly characters that might accidentally come and beat them. So that we they can forever have our golden boy champion at the front, our Canelo Alvarez, our Vasily Lomachenko. And remember when they said, remember this, they said that that was for, for people who fight moving up and down in weight classes. Let's see if they don't wind up giving that to Tyson Fury too. If Tyson Fury says, no, I refuse this. I will not fight for this belt if you don't do what I say. Well, here's your franchise champion because we love those blue eyes. Yes, we do. And we think that you can sell better like Abel Sanchez. We think, we think you can sell better to the mainstream boxing fan. No, not to the mainstream boxing fan. To the casual boxing fan. You know, the all important the all important casual boxing fan that they were always looking forward to trying to get to help them make that money. Anyway, it's disgusting to me. It is what it is. And with that, I'm out. Peace.